Hello, my name is Arcella Kripa. And I'm Stephen Mueller. And together we direct POST project for Operative Spatial Technologies, a Texas Tech University College of Architecture Research Center. This is the militarized landscape of the borderland, and it is really our office and our reason for being here to enact alternatives to this kind of damaging and divisive use of infrastructure. This is our daily commute actually driving along the international border fence, which was built after the Secure the Fence Act of 2006 um, and 57 miles of it were completed around 2008, mostly along the channelized Rio Grande River, which serves as the international boundary. You can see homes here in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, across the riverbed. And then you get glimpses through the natural landscape as border agents enter and exit this no man's land. There's a new highway that straddles the border fence with parts of it on the south side of the fence with commuters hovering above the no man's land between the fence and the river that you see here. Um, it's common to actually see border patrol apprehensions in this area as migrants who make it past the fence face an impassable infrastructural landscapes. Here you see the highway, the border fence, and the Texas Tech uh, soon coming up here on the left, uh, the Texas Tech College of Architecture, which is a space where we teach and work and where we prototyped um, our project spectral for our exhibit Columbus. In this context, surveillance is pervasive. It controls and impacts daily life through border crossings, through parks and urban environments. Recent advances in multispectral imaging technologies, which have been developed through military and security research, have led to a widespread increase in the availability and use of affordable sensors, cameras, and handheld devices capable of detecting previously unseen and invisible conditions beyond the visible spectrum in urban environments. Spectral is a custom fabricated installation that deploys a matrix of infrared reflective material to shield a public space and its users from multispectral sensing. By distorting and camouflaging the image capture and image recognition capacity of aerial thermal imaging technologies. The installation is built with aluminum composite material. Thermal heat signatures are undetectable in infrared photography when passing behind the material. Just as designers of the built environment have developed expertise for decades in designing for optical qualities of light and shadow, we must now broaden our domain to include the provision of what we call multispectral shadow. The installation is designed as a series of distorted reticular forms. Reticles like crosshairs are horizontal and vertical registration marks used for optical targeting and georeferencing by a number of optical devices, including aerial surveys using photogrammetry. For the installation to complicate and confuse such thermal and machine vision, the expected two-dimensional cruciform shape of the reticle is extruded into three dimensions. The repeated appearance of similar reticular forms at multiple depths problematizes the dimensional registration of the form. The forms are each built from two central panels of CNC routed aluminum composite, which is slotted together and then bolted to four side panels. The parts are all designed to nest tightly on standard four by eight sheets, maximizing the protective volume while minimizing material waste. Using a flat pack approach, the parts can easily stack in a minimal volume for ease of shipping before and after installation. We developed and prototyped the project from our research center at Texas Tech University's El Paso campus, located in the Union Depot train station, steps from the US-Mexico border fence uh, that you see here. This is a Daniel Burnham designed building. It's, it was built in 1906 and is still a functioning train station. Um, Amtrak operates from the lower level. Layers of infrastructure from the rail yard, the border highway, and the elevated highway create a thick boundary between the station and the international border. The upper levels are the former railroad offices, and now they're converted into our architectural studios. This is the main space of the ground floor, and the passenger hall is off, and it, which is often filled with passengers commuting through West Texas to LA and San Antonio. We often Text structure, test structural and assembly ideas with small prototypes first. And these laser cut pieces you see here help us uh, decide on the most effective joint and, and panel profiles in order to see for ourselves how different assemblies uh, can block aerial vision. 
and uh, how they may be able to engage aerial targeting. With these proofs of concept, then we move to full-scale prototyping with the help of our wonderful team of research assistants, uh, who you hear from one now. Hi there, my name is Colin Weiner. I'm a research assistant at the Project for Operative Space I helped with prototyping the bundled aluminum components for Spectral. In my studio class, we work a lot with laser cutting smaller pieces for models and small prototypes. But this was my first opportunity to work with CNC milling and prototyping at full scale. With prototyping larger pieces like this, I think there's definitely a learning curve. We had to pay attention to the small details and consider the ease of constructability to make sure that the parts would go together correctly and efficiently. It struck me that even a small change in the design of a single part could have large ramifications on the outcome of the overall assembly. I helped to refine the depth of the cut to make the folded edges bend without breaking and how fast the drill bit was set to spin to produce a clean edge. For the prototype, one of our major concerns was the rigidity and the balance of the structure. We tested the center of gravity for the modules as well. We were happy to find that they were self-balancing to the point where I was even able to sit underneath one of the overhanging modules. It was a great opportunity to learn and use more of the tools we have available here at Texas Tech. The lessons that we learned from the prototype informed our final production files, which were cut and packed here at Associated Fabrication in Brooklyn, and then delivered just in time in a very small box and a very large truck to the site at the Crump Theater in Columbus. We spent a few days inside the Crump lobby, organizing the pieces and prepping them for installation. The parts were bent and bolted with simple tools, including some we constructed ourselves to speed the process along. Once all 54 modules were assembled and all the bolts were tightened, we were ready to place the pieces on site. We worked with local fabricators in Columbus, including Lear Waterjet and Machining, who waterjet are custom designed steel anchors that you see here. And Central Sheet Metal actually did the forming and the welding. Translating the digital file to the site was a bit more of an analog process. Uh, we had some pretty sophisticated shop drawings that you see here on the right. And help, we had great help from the folks at the Crump Theater, uh, Jess Schnapp and her team, and even some volunteers. The pre-cut holes and the anchors helped make the assembly foolproof. The folded nesting base detail helped speed up the assembly time as parts could easily slip and lock into place. So a small team completed the installation in just a few days. Um, we generally design deployable projects to be rapidly erected by teams without any particular background in construction to, in order to achieve maximum effect. And then the respective, the repetitive array achieves a high degree of optical variety within an economy of discrete parts. The project is constructed in six bundles in an urban alley, which is used as a pedestrian passageway and sometimes as a site for public events. From the street, the bundles appear as a continuous wall, shielding pedestrians from the street view while also providing a visual backdrop for events in front of the screen. The target light forms are designed to simultaneously address and manipulate several different vantage points from which aerial optical technologies typically capture images of urban form. From the overhead view, typical of satellite photography, the forms appear as a grid of targets. From the oblique view, typical of aerial drone photography, the broad sides of the forms block vision and create the multispectral shadow. From the ground level, the forms reveal a layered inner and outer construction with varying optical and thermal characteristics. At night, the installation is activated with an array of LEDs. Tall shadows cast by the structure fill the theater wall, creating an urban presence inviting pedestrians to inhabit the installation. We've been testing the impacts beyond the visible spectrum as well, including through inviting thermal activities on site, like this gathering during the opening week. Um, using some of the same ubiquitous handheld thermal imaging technologies, we're able to see how the piece impacts the multispectral city, creating a safe space for individual and collective signatures beyond the detection of multispectral surveillance. And we continue to explore and test the impact through different imaging devices and events during the exhibition. 
And we're so happy that Spectral could help shape a new kind of space for Exhibit Columbus. This project was made possible by the generous support of many people and organization uh, whom you see listed here and we are grateful. And please follow us on social media for updates on this project and other similar initiatives. <laughs>